Rocket League developer Psyonix is opening an esports shop that allow final revenue back to esports teams and players. The star will open for business on April 16th as part of the Rocket League esports shop pilot program. That's a mouthful, and will feature items like decals, wheels, and player banners representing a variety of teams. While teams will likely be keen to appear in the star for marketing reasons, there's also a financial incentive. As all esports organizations participating in the pilot program will net 30% of revenue from related sales. A portion of revenue from every item sold will also be distributed among players in the North American and European Rocket League Championship Series League play. Why a prize pool bonus irrespective of whether they are a member of the pilot program. Psyonix claims there will help the opportunities for teams in Oceania and South America to participate in the revenue sharing program. Further down the line, the star itself will appear in the Rocket League main menu under shop following an update on April 16th. It will feature six in-game items each day, which will be purchasable using a new currency called Esports Tokens. Those tokens will be sold in packs of one hundred zero dollars. 九九六百四美元，九九一千二百九美元，九九 and two thousand and five hundred ninety dollars. 九九 and much like the items in the star itself. Will not be tradable. When the team at Phil Bitterman has decided to make a sequel to their survival role-playing game, some listed there were a few areas they highlighted for improvement. One being progression. According to Chris Gardner, the narrative director at Phil Bitter Games, a lot of players had given feedback that they had wanted to like some lists more than they did. But the game's fiddly progression system and lack of tangible reward had stopped them from becoming more invested. So, in response, Gardner devised a new kind of progression system for the sequel. Some list signs, one based around the idea of facets. In some list signs, players would be able to captain a locomotive and explore the unknown, being fat chunks of descriptive text. While trying to stay sane and stay off hunger, yet now, whenever they leveled up, they would be able to make a choice between a number of short narrative details about their past, called facets, that greatly increase one attribute while mildly improving on another. Hearts, iron, mirrors, nails, hearts, the skill of convincing and enduring, iron. The skill of confronting an overpowering mirrors. The skill of investigating and deducing nails. The skill of deceiving and debating. Some of these facets may be related to deals the players themselves had accomplished, such as surviving after taking heavy damage to their health. Are expanded details about their past, or their selected origin, such as street urchin, soldier, poet, academic. Priest, the captain, auditor, and revolutionary. The stats given from this could then be used by the player to add skill checks. The inspiration for this concept came from a few different places. One of these being the character generation screens from Sunlisted and Sunlisted skis, where you need to pick an origin and that then decides the stats you are going to be starting out with. My idea was to take that sort of choice and extend it throughout the character advancement," says Gardner. So you are not front-loading all the decisions about that character. You are going to make those choices all throughout the game. In addition, Gardner also took influence from several tabletop role-playing games and their progression systems. A few which he calls to mind include Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, where you can pick a career and increase your stats within that chosen area. Burning Wheel, which uses a system called Life Paths, 
that lets you follow a character through different roles. And Cubicle 7, a wandering game, where advancement is unique to the specific culture you have chosen. It's kind of a combination of all those things percolating in my head, he says. It goes back to this mantra of, let's put star in it. Wherever we could find an option to do it, we would put story into a mechanical system, and add flavor to it that way, it opened a bunch of options to us. It became a good way to deliver more information about the world and the setting, which is broke and complicated, and we did not want to bombard people with lots of stuff to begin with. When the decision was made to include facets as the reward for progression, another problem soon emerged, mainly how to make each decision feel impactful to your character. As given the sheer amount of options available not a lot of narrative consequence could be placed on any one decision. As Gardner explains, facets are really difficult to write because they have to be this really short. Punchy initial situations, and then each of them has two little sub choices attached to them, and both of those have to be meaningful in relation to each other. Choosing one over the other has to feel like a real decision because if you are one of them, you are not the other. To accomplish, Gardner opted for broad strokes over specificity. This way, they could introduce the player to a prompt and then allow the player to use that as a way of contextualizing their own experiences and choose how they reflect on that. We'd have to leave a bunch of fruitful space for the player to fill in details, says Gardner, so each of this cannot be too specific. So, for example, there's one called a lost love, which is you have loved and you have lost, and how does that affect you? We talked at one point about having a whole story about that where you could explore and kind of decide who it was that you have lost, and then kind of dig into that more. But in fact, it's more useful for players to be able to decide that and make that part of their story. Already, the developers have seen this facet led to some interesting stories emerging from the game's community. Given that they never explicitly state the identity of the lost love, some players, for instance, have taken the facet and applied it in a way to create a relationship between their current captain and their previous one, while others have devised their own personal histories with some of the NPCs they have encountered in the skies. It also means players are not forced into heterosexual relationships, and that they have the freedom to decide who they are. As far as the types of prompts they introduced, Gardner took a thematic approach. Each batch of facets in the game had to relate to one strong cat theme, with the idea being to give them a sense of cohesion and grandeur. So, the first batch I wrote was all themed around menaces and bad things that had happened to you, explains Gardner, and these were all taken from one of our other games. Fall along in our browser game, that does not happen there, but there are menaces that can happen to you, like scandal and wounds, and when those reach a certain point, you go into a menace state. Like you are in out or you are imprisoned or whatever. Other batches included some facets related to individual origins, such as an hour in Get Summer, where players that had picked the priest could decide whether or not they had lost their faith, and another based on the concept of the Far Horseman of the Apocalypse, Death, Famine, Plague, and War. It was looking for big kind of chunky themes that could support a range of different facets, he says, and that ended up making up a fairly diverse jigsaw. Facets were not the only change made to the progression in Sunless Skies. However, pages, an attribute from Sunless representing knowledge and trickery, was also taken out of the game. In Sunless City, 
players could use the page's attribute to earn more secrets, which could then be used to raise specific stats. But the conditions necessary to raise your pages were often weak and difficult to achieve. On top of this, there was also another problem. Anything that speeds up leveling up is a very powerful thing and it drastically affects how different players experience the game. Argues Gardner. So players are just going to get more powerful, more quickly, 